Okay, good afternoon everybody. Um, my name is Ian Collin. I'm a lecturer in education at Queen's University in Belfast where I lead the post-primary PGCE in French, German and Spanish and I'm also director of the Northern Ireland Centre for Information on Language Teaching and Research which is a partnership between Queen's University and the Department of Education here in Northern Ireland to promote the teaching and learning of modern languages in primary and post-primary schools. Today I'm going to be speaking to you about some of our research that we have conducted in the School of Education um, on transition from primary language programmes to post-primary language provision. This was funded by um, the Northern Ireland Languages Council vis-à-vis -vis the Department of Education and was of a slightly smaller scale than the research that we've just heard about from Sharon at, at Stromillis. Nonetheless, I do think it provides interesting um, data uh, that will contribute to the wider debate on primary languages provision here in this part of the world. Um, everybody is in the room today because you have a vested interest in languages. And uh, before we do get underway, is there anything at the front of the room you can see that is in a language other than English? What do we have at the front of the room? A letterbox. A letterbox, okay. We have a brief casting, which is a German letterbox. Um, wonder what's in this letterbox. I'm going to have a quick look at it here and see what it is. <laughs> There's something in the letterbox. Okay. <laughs> got two people in the letterbox here, okay, which is slightly unusual for a case seminar, I appreciate. <laughs> These are my two friends, okay. This is uh, Felix. Felix is a frosch or a frog. And this is Franzi. Franzi is eine Ente or a duck. And Felix and Franzi are going to feature in my presentation today. What we want to do, first of all, is share with you my learning intentions. Like all good teachers, I want to make these clear to you. Uh, in this presentation, I want to share with you uh, knowledge of current modes of delivery of primary languages in this part of the world. Understand our recent research uh, into transition in languages in Northern Ireland from Key Stage 2 to Key Stage 3. And then cross-cutting all of this is to understand our vision for a research-informed uh, primary languages programme in this part of the world. So we've already been introduced to my two friends, okay, and it's time for you all now to do a little bit of speaking, and you're all going to learn a little bit of German today. So can everybody please repeat after me? Das ist Felix. Das ist Felix. Felix ist ein Frosch. Felix ist ein Frosch. Und das ist sein Haus. Das ist sein Haus. Felix ist im Haus. Das ist Franzi. Das ist Franzi. Franzi ist eine Ente. Felix und Franzi sind Freunde. Brilliant. One more time. All together. Off we go. Das ist Felix. Felix ist ein Frosch. Und das ist sein Haus. Felix ist im Haus. Das ist Franzi. Franzi ist eine Ente. Felix und Franzi sind Freunde. One more time. Das ist Felix. Felix ist ein Frosch. Und das ist sein Haus. Felix ist im Haus. Das ist Franzi. Franzi ist eine Ente. Felix und Franzi sind Freunde. Oh, very good. Excellent. Okay, full marks class for your participation in German today, and you can see how easy it is to start to pick up a new language, even if you didn't have any words of German at all. Um, I'm going to start my talk today by looking at some policy um, and looking at what our Chief Inspector has been saying about languages in her biennial report to schools on uh, what's happening in terms of inspection activity. Back in 2012, when she was looking back on 2010 to 2012, she said that where a school promotes values and supports languages effectively as core elements of the curriculum, the pupils make good progress. And from that, we can deduce that where a school has a culture of internationalisation and a culture of language learning, more often than not, the children within that school are going to be making good progress. Things were looking a little bit more bleak um, four years later when she published her report for 2014 to 2016. And it's um, cited in the report there that the continued low uptake of modern languages remains a major concern and indeed a major challenge for Northern Ireland. Learning another language contributes well to promoting mutual understanding, improving community cohesion, 
and enabling young people to enjoy the economic, social and cultural benefits of living in a global-sized society. More needs to be done to encourage pupils in post-primary schools to study languages beyond key stage 3, which is age 14. And it's regrettable that the well-conceived or well-received Primary Modern Languages programme has not been built on in a more strategic manner. And many of you in the room here today will be aware that the Primary Modern Languages programme here was discontinued in 2015. Northern Ireland is the only part of the United Kingdom where there's no entitlement uh, to languages in the primary curriculum, which is the whole reason for today's seminar and uh, what we really do want to try and change for the better. The current provision in Northern Ireland um, has been researched over the past number of, of years. Back in 2010, uh, Noel Purdy from Stramillis University College, along with some colleagues, did some research into primary language teaching and found that there was a patchwork of schools delivering different models of primary language provision. And between 2010 and today, and the research that you've heard from Sharon and also research that I'm bringing to the table, this patchwork hasn't been joined up. We don't have the quilt yet, okay? We still have a huge patchwork out there with various modes of delivery. And what we have in Northern Ireland is a far cry from the current policy that is in force in other parts of the United Kingdom and also in the Republic of Ireland, and indeed at odds with other um, jurisdictions in Europe um, as, a, as a whole. For our research, we were tasked by the Northern Ireland Languages Council to look specifically at transition from primary to post-primary level. And I was the principal investigator on this study and was joined by two very competent colleagues, uh, Dr Eugene McKendry, who's recently retired, and Leanne Henderson, who has joined us today and is in the, the audience as well. Um, Leanne is a qualified uh, post-primary teacher and former head of Department of Modern Languages and um, is also just about to finish her PhD in uh, assessment. We decided within the framework of our research that we were going to adopt a qualitative approach because we were working to very tight timescales and we needed to see what exactly was going on out there in schools. And we based this on four primary schools which were a uh, Post sorry, for post-primary schools, where we looked specifically at children who were in year eight. And we talked to 24 of them through very structured focus groups to find out from them what their experience of learning primary languages was like. 24 might seem like a small number of children, but we were very careful to ensure that the 24 children were from 24 different primary schools, which allowed us, in the constraints of time and funding, to hear the voices of a, a wide number of primary schools there um, in, in year eight children. And we also spoke to four principals of post-primary schools through semi-structured interviews. We looked at the findings after doing our focus groups and our semi-structured interviews. We looked at these findings by analysing them thematically using a process called thematic analysis, which is widely used in the qualitative paradigm. And we find uh, four main themes starting to appear from the data that were, were collected and analysed. First of all was the status of languages in primary schools, then the teacher of primary languages, what children learn and how children learn. And I'm going to turn to each of these four themes in turn to provide you with some information about what we were um, able to find out. The year eight pupils from whom we were talking to really did seem to see primary languages as having quite a low status. They were saying things to us like, in the primary school, it wasn't a proper subject. And I done Spanish, for I did Spanish in primary six and primary seven, but I missed it for the primary uh, transfer test, which we have a huge tension here in this part of the world. Sometimes teachers are taught or are told to operate the transfer test and to teach to it. Other times teachers are told not to teach to the transfer test. But for this particular child's experience, whenever he was preparing for his 11 plus for his transfer test, the Spanish was no longer seen as being important. It was the thing that, that fell off the radar. Um, whenever the children got to year eight, they saw that the languages in school had much more of prestige and much more status. They were telling us things like they were being taught by a qualified teacher of languages, a specialist in modern languages teaching, and they could perceive that and, and, and um, pick up on that. One people told us because they actually teach you the language, like they actually work here and they're not just voluntarily coming in to teach you. Um, and that was something that we really you know, clung on to in our research because it was highlighting to us the failures of the past and the model of bringing staff in to deliver the primary languages. Um, there was no evidence of effective transfer 
um, in any of the four schools that we worked with. So we didn't see any schemes of work being aligned between Key Stage 2 and Key Stage 3. We didn't see any evidence of professional dialogue between teachers of Key Stage 2 and Key Stage 3. And whilst that sample there is quite small, we also base these findings on our community of practice and knowing what's going on out there in the landscape of what is a geographically quite a small country. Um, and whilst we would like to do more in-depth research into this, I think we can confidently say that there's no school uh, system in Northern Ireland or school partnership in Northern Ireland where primary and post-primary schools are collaborating effectively in terms of pupil transition of their language learning journey. Um, pupils were telling us in the post-primary school we go over everything that we did in, in year eight, which is not conducive to, to language learning or to pupil motivation. The second theme that we saw was of the teacher of languages, so who was actually doing the teaching, and we found a great variety of people involved in delivering primary languages. Some of our 24 children had been taught by a sixth former from the local post-primary school, they'd been taught by a teacher from the local post-primary school, they'd been taught by their own classroom teacher, they'd been taught by people um, coming in from outside companies which have set up and are now operating in this part of the world. There was a real lack of common experience, and one boy told us that his teacher was a big, fat Spanish woman in a flurry dress. And that's all he could remember. Um, and we had to put that into our report as well, um, because it's what the child said. But um, it gave us a giggle along the way. Um, what the children are learning in primary languages, this resonates with a lot of research that's been done into primary languages in England by Gary Chambers and Louise Courtney. Um, and the children said that they were focusing heavily on the spoken word and um, understanding the spoken word. They were doing less activities in writing. And that tends to be what goes on in a lot of primary uh, language programs, but we probably need to look more carefully at getting the balance right there between the four skills in communicative language teaching, between the productive skills and the receptive skills. One pupil telling us, I learned how to pronounce things in primary school, but I didn't know how to spell it. <clears throat> When we're thinking about how the children learn languages, they were able to tell us that they were never assessed in their primary language learning journey. And um, I think that if we are to move forward with this, we do need to consider very carefully how children are assessed. Um, assessment has a huge backwash on language learning, and any form of assessment that would be introduced would need to be positive. There are concerns about teacher competence, about things like sixth formers going down to teach the primary languages, about um, primary teachers who maybe only have a GCSE in the language themselves. All of that needs to be navigated very carefully, resonating with what Sharon has found at Stramillus and um, trying to push forward a bespoke initial teacher education pathway with modern languages in this part of the world. And a very broad sweeping statement here that we can't stand over is um, the feeling that we as a research team got that primary languages in their current form in Northern Ireland could actually be doing more harm than good. And um, this is a, a statement that we would need to do an awful lot more research in before we can stand over it. But we do just, it got our cogs turning that the children had had either poor experiences or their view of primary languages was so low that that was carrying through with them into post-primary education. So if we're going to make things right in this part of the world, we've got to get it right and we've got to learn by the failures of, of the past. Um, but it's just a thought that we had never really thought of before embarking on the study. What we would be pushing forward um, from the NYSELT end of things, uh, based at Queen's, would be for primary languages to become part of programme for government in this part of the world. Um, whenever we get a government up and running, um, which we all hope will be very soon, um, it needs to go on to programme for government. If it doesn't go on to programme for government, we will be standing here having the exact same conversations in 10 years' time. Um, now is our chance with things changing in this very building for us to start to make the case and to unite together um, from all stakeholders within Northern Ireland to ensure that primary languages does have a huge status moving forward. If we do bring primary languages in, we need to look very carefully at transition from Key Stage 2 to Key Stage 3. Schemes of work need to align and um, professional dialogue between teachers at post-primary and primary level needs to improve. Local expertise is to be found in every town in this part of the world through the post-primary teachers who are specialist teachers of modern languages and through a vertical area learning community which doesn't yet exist but which could exist. There could be fruit fruitful collaboration between Key Stage 3 teachers and Key Stage 2 teachers. And I think that um, that would be a model that we would be advocating more research to be done into should the government choose to, to move forward with this. <clears throat> I think everybody in the room would, be agree, would agree with me that primary languages do need to become statutory to bring Northern Ireland into line with other parts of the UK and Ireland. 
and we certainly hope that today's seminar uh, at CAS will raise that awareness amongst a number of, of politicians and policymakers. <clears throat> so just to recap on what we've looked at here today in the presentation, you've all learned a little bit of German. Um, we have looked at um, the decline in GCSE and A-level and how we need to reverse that decline. We need to start at primary level um, to bring us into line with the rest of the UK and to nurture our children and young people to be lifelong learners of, of languages. That's all from me. Um, thank you very much for your attention. I'm going to pass over now to Kieran. Thank you. Thank you.